This is Matt from Adventure Sport Flashlights, and uh, today we're going to do a little video on what I'm going to call the Flashlight Hack Series. It's uh, part of a do-it-yourself series on how to convert uh, mag lights and other great flashlights into really high-powered mods. Um, today, what we're going to talk about is how to convert the switch so that you can have a super high-powered LED mod. Now, Mag does have some LED lights already out there, but I'm, t I'm not talking like, you know, a few hundred lumens. I mean, if you want to do several thousand lumens, there's a little bit more that you're going to have to do besides just go to Walmart and pick one up. So anyway, the first thing that we need to do is get our mag light and get the switch out of the bottom. So what we need to do for that is just pop the tail cap off and then remove this little rubber boot and click the switch into the on position and take your hex key. The, this is a, actually not a hex key, it's a T8 Torx bit and finding them that'll fit in here is kind of tough so I do have some available on the website or you can just go get a multi-tool set and uh, or a, you know, a set that has all the different sizes in it and grind the shaft down a little bit and then it fits in there just fine. So crack that loose and give it a couple of spins till it's free and just drop it on out the bottom and you're all set. Now there's two basic types of mod that you're going to do to this and one is just to reduce the resistance that's inside this switch and the reason you'd want to do that is to get higher current especially in a, a direct drive mod or uh, one that uses a linear driver um, you can get a lot higher current by doing this. So just pop that off and get the old bulb out. And what we do uh, is remove this here. Be sure you don't lose any of these pieces because you're going to need most of them when you put this back. And we pop this out and inside there is a spring and that's that's your battery positive contact all of your current has to flow through this spring which which is okay if you just want you know a few hundred milliamps or something but if you want two or three or five or ten amps that's that's not a very good electrical path so what we're gonna do is change that path by putting a piece of wire in there um, a lot of people use this braided wire, it's called solder wick, and it, it it will definitely work for this. I don't particularly care for it because it's got a lot of these little tiny fibers and no insulation on it, and so if it goes up and down a bunch like this, pieces could actually break off and fall down inside your light and cause a short. So I just use some decent silicone wire. You know, there's plenty this is plenty better than than traveling through that spring there and it's gonna uh, it's got this insulation to keep you from needing your or from dropping little pieces of wire down inside your light so we're just gonna get a little piece here and then you wanna strip the end so it's like that and I always use some flux. This is a this is Kester uh, number 951 no clean flux, and I like no clean for exactly that reason. There's flux is an acid, and if you don't clean it off when you're done, it can weaken your solder joints. But this you don't need that. You don't, it, it'll still leave a residue you can see, but you don't have to clean it off for fear of it weakening your joints. So, now we've got three basic parts right here, and we're going to start with this top piece. That's where the, the light bulb would typically touch the battery positive contact. And we're going to stick it in here just like this. That is a peg vise, if you're wondering very useful 
And then we just want to get a little bit of solder down in there in the very tip so that uh, we can put our wire to it. And then we take the piece of wire that we pre-tinned and stick it there until that cools. Oop. Didn't get her quite hot enough. keeping my heat out of there. Okay, now we've got a good solid contact there and just slip this spring right back over it. You don't have to solder the spring to that, it doesn't matter. Your electricity is going to come right through here and then do the same thing to the other end just like what you did before. Don't breathe that stuff. get our puddle of solder good and hot and we've left that that just a little longer than the spring so that we for sure get contact to the wire solders into that it doesn't matter whether or not the spring does it will in this case just because I've got a bunch in there but that's the important part is that that wire is in there so now we've got a new thermal or a new electrical path through there and instead of just traveling through that steel spring that's really high in resistance it's going to travel through the wire so now all we got to do is put this beast back together drop your spring piece in there find that little hole and screw this bit back in. You're good to go. Now if you're using one of the Adventure Sport drop-ins you won't need these pieces back in there because it just that's how the bulb makes contact. You've got your both your positive and your negative there and that's going to give you some higher current. You don't have to do that to use this bulb. There's This is a straight drop in. You don't need to but for those of you who always 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 want to push the envelope that's how you do this. Now if you want to do the kind of mod that requires a heat sink like this so that your flashlight still focusable you'll put a single LED on there. This one is uh, multiple LEDs that use an optic, but if you want to use your mag reflector and a single LED, you'll use a heat sink like this, which is going to fit down in the neck of your light like that. And there won't be room for all of this switch tower. You know, that switch tower comes to like right there, so you can't you can't do that. So what you'll have to do is Basically the same disassembly that we did before, you'll take this this tower out, or these inside parts, and then you'll cut this tower off so that it's it's smooth like this. You'll uh we'll pull this piece with the with the screw and everything out the back. And this is one I've already done, obviously. I've uh cut this tower off of here with the lathe, but you don't need a lathe, you can just use a Dremel or a hacksaw, nobody's going to see that. And then the only other thing you're going to do is take your pair of pliers and snap this little piece. It's real easy to break. 
snap that out so it looks like this so that when we put it back together you've got a clear path for your wire and you don't have to try to squeeze it up through that little hole. So once you've got that tower cut off, the only other mod I suggest doing before you start soldering here is that positive contact in the center. I always take and I bend it up with a pair of pliers like that and then solder to it because you'll get a whole lot better joint. It doesn't matter how much flux or how much solder, it doesn't matter how good you are at soldering. For some reason, if you jerk hard enough, it seems like the wire will come off of that, but I don't know if it's the roughness of it being uncrimped or what, but when you solder your wire on right there, it, it makes an impeccable contact. And of course, we'll take our, our wire cutters and this contact that used to stick up the back there, you just snip that off. And this is the only part you'll need. Take a little bit of our flux there. We tin that. The same thing right here. The inside of this contact. And that's going to be for our LED wires. This is your negative contact right there. Battery positive. Okay. And so we're good to go. Then all you'll have to do is wire this up to your driver board. Stick it back in the in the mag light when you've got all of that together. Um, one other thing that for either one of these switch mods, if you plan to use um, 26650 batteries like for example, this is a 6D drop-in and you want to use a small flashlight body, the 2D, and maybe you've bought the kit that we sell at the shop um, to use the two 26650s in here to power it. What you'll need to do is make a contact right here because this is it's countersunk and 26650 batteries are flat on the top so they won't natively make contact right there you'll get nothing you'll have no power and be like hey what's going on and one solution is you can put a couple of these magnets on the top of your first battery and they'll make contact there then but if you've already got this switch apart what I recommend doing is this um, I solder a piece of metal on here. It's a copper contact for low resistance. This is actually just, it's a gas check from a bullet, but it's made of solid copper and it's really good. Uh, BLF member Matt Ward came by the shop one day and turned me on to that and I've used the heck out of them ever since. So here's what we do for that. You got to be careful how much heat you put on this right here because it is sitting in plastic so you need a pretty hot iron and you need to be pretty quick otherwise you're gonna have trouble but here's how we do that. Just get a little solder on there and then fill this up. I've just had better luck doing it this way than trying to solder it down the sides. It makes a more unbreakable contact And then we let that cool and you're done. You know, double check it with your pliers, make sure it's not going to snap off. But then that way you've got a solid copper contact that's going to give you that right there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments if you liked it.
like the video. There's plenty more to come. Happy modding.